I've come across a problem with STEM. Hi everyone, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. I'm an assistant principal in Southwest Sydney and I've been running this YouTube channel now for about eight, nine months. Who's keeping count? If you've been with me since the beginning, thank you so much for following. And if you're one of my new viewers today, I hope you enjoy this video. If you like it, use the thumbs up, give me some feedback, click to subscribe. And if you've got any questions, please put it in the comments below or send me a message on any of my other social media. I've got Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook and everything and the links are all below. That's why I'm pointing down like this. If you're watching this in a different social media format, you'll probably need to open this up into YouTube to be able to see all of those links. And I highly recommend that you do because I'm going to be giving you lots of links below for what I'm talking about today. Talking about, rambling about really. This is something I haven't really plotted out in my notebook as I usually do because this is just, it's been an ongoing conversation for a couple of weeks with different teachers that I've been coming across and now it's becoming a pet peeve for me. So the conversation I've been having is around STEM and it's come up because a lot of the STEM share kits are um, being put together at the moment. And I know the team that are doing it and they're doing an amazing job. I got to have a sneak peek at what's um, going into some of them and they look really good. They're going to be great for schools. But the conversations that I've been having with schools, with teachers, sorry, I should say, is really showing me that there's a barrier to understanding what STEM is and what you can do with it and how versatile it is. It's not about packing um, robotics and coding and iPads and tablets and everything into one particular area. All of those things are a tool, they're a resource, like any other resource you would have in the classroom, whether it's for English or maths or art or whatever. Take it back down to the basic. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's what it stands for. STEAM is when you add art into that mix. And there's lots of other ones as well where some have said stream and they've added reading into it and then oh, people are making their own little versions of it as well. Let's, let's keep it with STEM just for this conversation at the moment. Um, you know, we, we know what science is and we know what maths is, especially as um, primary teachers because those are, those are, I guess those are our syllabus areas. That's what we know. Engineering is kind of out there for us sometimes kind of feels like it's that secondary subject you need to be an expert or qualifications in doing it um, and then when we combine that with you know technology technology sits within our science syllabus and maybe that might be the area that you're not so confident in as technology changes constantly and what's coming into our schools and what has come into our schools is quite often dependent on funding depending on what you've got we've got lots of BYOD programs I can guarantee you that low socioeconomic schools will never be able to ha sustain a BYOD program in our current system as it is at the moment. So let's go to engineering then and just break that barrier down for us so that we're not thinking that we need to have robots and coding and all of those things to be able to embrace STEM. It's a great tool to have. You don't need it though. You don't have to have money to do it. So. Um, I've got some notes on my screen over here, so if I'm looking over there, I'm just looking at the, the things that I've pulled up on the screen because I'm going to show you some links in a minute. So when you think of the his history of engineering, um, it's divided roughly into four sort of overlapping phases. So you've got the pre-scientific revolution. So think of things like the master builders, like Leonardo da Vinci and, um, you know, think of catapults being made and, and battles like that using the, the, that different form of engineering. Um, then you've got the Industrial Revolution. So this is looking at the sort of 18th, 19th century when mechanical engineers were changing from, you know, those practical sort of artists to scientific professionals. Then you have the Second Industrial Revolution. So this is the century before sort of World War II and it was chemical and electrical. And then we were looking at things like um, branching out into cars and aeroplanes and remember the first aeroplane it didn't have an like the, the engines that we've got now this is what engineers were doing back then they didn't have robots they didn't have that same technology that we're looking at now um, and then we had the information revolution so this is um after the war when science really matured and now we're looking at things like micro electronic electronics and computers telecommunications and information technology at the moment. So when you go back through that history, I, I always go back to that basics, that basic thought of engineering as a catapult. 
That's what I love. I love doing STEM activities where you need to create a catapult to do something. So if you can keep that thought in your mind when you're thinking of engineering, that might help you bridge that barrier over thinking, well, I need money and I need, you know, um, robots and things to be able to do it. Um, and then even thinking of a technology. When you think of technology and um, what's gone through the ages of that, when you go back to, sorry, I'm just scrolling through some of my things here. Um, go back to the Stone Age. That was a technological advance for the time. And then, you know, we get into fire and cooking and housing and tools and weapons. That's technology. Technology isn't necessarily something that we plug in. It's evolved over time to be that at the moment, but go back to what technology was and how those things were made and designed. And essentially it was all trial and error for a while there for all those creators. And that's what we want our kids to be doing. Problem solving, thinking creatively, being critical about the choices that they're making, um, predicting what could or couldn't happen or the best ways to do things and building structures. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm going to flip my camera and I'm going to show you two websites. Now, remember I'm in New South Wales, guys. I'm in the department system. So resources that I show you are things that I use because, um, they guide what I do in the classroom usually, or what I'm working on with my team. So I'm sure there are great resources out there worldwide. And if you are someone who's watching this from interstate or overseas, these resources should be accessible to you. These aren't things that I've had to log in and find on our system. So you should be able to go to these, save them, print them, whatever, um, and have a go at them. Now, these are things that can be done without needing to necessarily spend lots of money. I love the idea that I can just buy um, maybe a cheap pack of Lego because Lego's fun. Who doesn't want Lego? I got my Lego out today. Um, you know, powder pop sticks. Uh, straws, elastic bands, you know, tape, string, wool, all those things that you that you could use to be constructive. These things should be sitting in your art storeroom somewhere and you can pull them out and use them for these um, STEM things. If you go on Pinterest and type in STEM, I'm sure there will be a lot there. And you know what? I'm going to make a dedicated section on my Pinterest to STEM and I'm going to give you that link below to my Pinterest and you can go on and have a look and see what random things I find on there. So I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see what I'm doing on the computer. No, I haven't learned how to do screen capture yet. I haven't had time. I'll get to it. Deal with it. <laughs> okay, guys. So this is now, if you were part of, if you've been part of the system for a while, you'll kind of know what the old board of studies website looked like. And you can see Ness is a part of this. Um, this is kind of the old version here, but you can see there's STEM sample activities. So, you know, board of studies, Syllabus, syllabus development, STEM units. I will link this. You won't need to write that down. And you've got sample activities for stages. So stage one, early stage one, there's some activities there. Stage one, we've got things like oil and water, weather, weather everywhere. Stage two, now you see it. Build a bridge. Do you know what? I'm going to click on build a bridge because I did something similar to this before. So we've got a description here. So you could, you know, copy and paste this and print it if you want to. We've got now these, I'm pretty sure these are the old outcomes. Yep. But either way, the activity itself is still relevant. So your resources. Let's look at the resources. Geo strips, paddle pop sticks, paper, boxes, wooden blocks, books, cardboard straws, pipe cleaners, sticky tape coins or masses. No robots. This is still STEM. And then there's some more. Sorry, I'm just going to go back. Some for stage two, some for stage three. And these are there ready for you to use. Just copy, paste, print, update with current um, outcomes and indicators. To fit in and this is great because it's cross-curricular you can um, target different areas in the same time and you can tie this in with writing or reading or other things that you're working on in the classroom I'm just gonna oh, no I won't close that I'll just go to my next one so this is um, STEM New South Wales I really love this website so I'm just gonna show you there stem New South Wales.com.au I will link it this just has so much stuff I recommend if you've got time, because <laughs> teachers have so much time on their hands, 
Um, having a look at these references here, a lot of people have read the Melbourne Declaration. These other two readings here are really good as well. And we've got links, sorry, there's links on there for them. The section that you'll really want to go to though is teaching and learning. Now I'm supervising stage three as my substantive position. And these are schools and their projects and they've put the units on there. So if you go through, there's a fair few here and I'm going to go down here to the Grange. I did a prac at the Grange in my uni years. This is Material World. So I'm just going to open it up so you can see what it looks like. It's down here. And when this loads, you're going to see it's got everything you need. So this is current. This is relevant to our current syllabus. Um, so 2017, so it may not have the, the updates that the science syllabus has, but those other ones are fine. So we've got our driving questions here, we've got assessment information, we've got syllabus outcomes and content for science and technology, mathematics, English, creative arts, so this one's obviously more of a STEAM one, and here's the lessons. And they've got everything here. Now let's have a look at these resources. Cardboard, pom-poms, empty large plastic bottles, straws, water, water dropper, tissue, newspaper, paper towel, baking paper, cardboard, gift card. I'm going to keep going all the way down and not once does it say robotics. Um, don't let that be a barrier for you. And you can see it's got everything in there that you need. Oops, go through. I'm going to the evaluation and presentation evaluation, student reflection, the design brief. This just, seriously, you could print this off. Actually, you should be printing it. You can save it, put it into digital program if you've got one and go from there. But really have a look at the um, the page here because, uh, sorry, the different sections on here because there's just lots of great stuff here. So we've got information from the primary STEM conference. There's Joe. Lots of great stuff on here that you can look at. So what I'm really hoping to get from anyone who's watching this is two things. I want to knock down any barriers that someone has about approaching the idea of using STEM in their classroom. I really want to make sure people understand that the idea of it is that it's not a gimmick. It's not a fad. <laughs> These things have been around since the beginning of human civilization and this is a great way to engage our kids in learning and to be able to just really get that holistic view of those things that we're doing. Kids love doing this stuff. I love doing this stuff. So, and for anyone else that's out there that's been doing this, even if you are using robotics or, or any of that electrical stuff that you think is really, really cool, I want to be able to share any great ideas or innovations or just tips that you have on implementing STEM in your classroom. I want you to share that with anyone that's watching now. So if you want to um, pop it in the comments below if you want to share it on any of my social media. Um, I'm sure anyone who's watching this that is thinking I might give it a go can read through the comments and see if anyone has any tips for doing that. It's just such a pet peeve to me that something like a concept being misconstrued would prevent someone from engaging in something. People out there have now thought STEM's a fad, it's a buzzword, we don't need to do it, it'll be over within a few years. It's been around the whole time. We're just putting it together at the moment. And if you're a teacher that's really good at using cross-curricular, you've probably been doing this and just not labeled it as STEM or programmed it as STEM. And this is something you can do. Team teaching, if you've got someone in your school that's been doing this and you've been thinking, that's out there, that's not my thing, I would really encourage you to go up to them and say, do you know what? Can I watch a lesson? Can I give it a go? Have you got a unit that you could share with me that you think might be a good way to get started? Because ultimately, the best way we're going to be able to do these things is seeing it in practice already. So if you want to pick something up and run with it, you know, YouTube it, Google it, Pinterest it. Just have a look around and immerse yourself in some of the other ideas that people have been doing. Look at student work samples and see what you can get out of it. One of the best ones that I did with my class is when I combined it with my um, Dungeons and Dragons writing. And if you saw that, the whole idea was just to encourage kids um, into writing based on um, gameplay, gaming, um, through the writing sessions. So in the last final action section that I had, I incorporated, I incorporated STEM into it where the kids um, had their characters who went on a campaign and they came to a river and they um, 
they needed to float down river to get to where they were going. It was a long trip, except all of the uh, wood that they needed that was in bundles was on the other side of the river. So they had to get to the other side of the river. So they had to use sticks and um, other things that were around them to be able to build a bridge to get over to the logs of bamboo that were perfect for making a raft for floating down river. They couldn't use the other sticks for making a raft just because when they tested it, it would sink. And I had all the resources to do this. So I had straws for the bamboo um, and then they could put things together. And then we actually had a tub of water and they had to find a way for the character to get over it and then build the raft and, and go down. There's measurement involved in that. There's trial and error. There's looking at your resources, what floats, what sinks. Um, what size do you need? Are you going to share with another character and be able to carry two or three or four people down that river? And you know, this was year two, so it wasn't too complex. I didn't want to have too much out there for them. Um, and this was combined with another thing that they were doing. It wasn't purely STEM. This was me trying to incorporate it into what we were doing. So there's ways of doing it um, to a degree where it's not overwhelming, it's not encumbersome, and it's easily accessible. Um, and it's fun it's always fun so my pet peeve is people putting these barriers up about what it actually is and the misunderstanding of what it is so please share all your information below if you've got it if you've got a unit that you want to share I don't know Google Drive it put it in the link for people below or if you belong to any of those butterfly wings groups please add it to the files tab so that um, the group members can can see it there I'm going to leave it there because I think that's enough ranting for tonight. I'm going to pop my button down below. If you want to subscribe, you just hover over that and click to subscribe. I'll put one of my other videos at the top there. And I would really like to see you all when I do my Twinkle live stream. I will keep you updated on social media for the date for that. Thanks, guys. Bye.